This video is the third of four which discusses how to design a house to be as flood resistant as possible. Part three focuses on how to keep water out of your house. Hi, I'm Daniel of Daniel Clark Architect. This is video number three in my mini series on designing a house to be as flood proof as possible. This design strategy can be used by anyone building a new house or even remodeling an existing house. In part two of my mini series, I looked at the different risks associated with a flood and also the different measures that a community and that a household can take to be best prepared for a flood. In this video, part three of my mini series, I'll start to look at the different strategies you can use to adjust the landscaping around your house and different features you can use on your house itself to help keep the water from getting inside. So the landscaping around your house, whether it's a large lot or a small lot, is your first line of defense. Essentially, there are two main techniques, diversion and absorption. Diversion is really intercepting the rainwater that happens to be coming down or across the surface of the ground and channeling it, diverting it away from your house so that you don't inundate and overwhelm the drainage system around your foundation. There are two or three main techniques to use here to divert the water. The first is a swale. The swales come in different types and I'll get into those a little bit later because they also incorporate absorption. You could also have a paved channel. It's essentially a miniature ditch but it, it could be designed quite pleasantly in a feature of your landscaping. You could line these paved channels with protrusions that help slow down the flow of water to reduce the risk of excess erosion further down the road. The third is rain barrels, a surprisingly cheap but effective means of catching the water that's shed off of your slope roof to the perimeter and instead of the water that comes out of the downspout overwhelming the drainage system around your foundation, you capture it. Okay, absorption. The key here is to bring the water down into the ground and to distribute it as well as possible. The first and easiest way to accomplish this is a gravel bed that's around your house, maybe a foot or too deep. This can be decorative gravel that can bring the water further down. Bark mulch is another means. It's not as good as bringing the water in, but it does start to soak up that water and hold on to it rather than overloading the surrounding landscape with excess water. Unit pavers are essentially brick-like structures that become a hard paving surface, but the joints in between them will allow some amount of water to soak into the ground instead of floating on the surface. There are also grass block pavers. These are miniature structures that are essentially open but provide a framework through which grass will grow but they still provide a surface that become a walkway or in some cases they allow the car or other light traffic to drive on top. And the last and probably one of the most effective means of capturing and diverting rainwater are bioswales. Bioswales come in different shapes and sizes and types but we can categorize them basically into three groups. The first is a grass line bioswale. It's essentially a linear depression line lined with grass. It gathers the water into one place where you can divert it. It also allows a small amount of that water to be brought down into the soil. Along this bioswale, you can also have check dams, parts where the ground comes up just a little, slow down the flow of water to give it more time to soak down into the soil. The second and more effective type of bioswale is an engineered bioswale. These are again depressions lined with gravel that might be a several feet deep. And at the bottom of this gravel bed is a perforated pipe, much like the pipe that's around your foundations. It'll capture the water that percolates down through the gravel and help distribute it more uniformly throughout the site further down. The third type of bioswale is a wet bioswale, a linear reservoir that's lined with plants that are designed for standing water, plants such as bulrushes or cattails. Something else you need to consider is if you have an outdoor fuel tank, natural gas propane, if it's inadequately secured, flood water will lift it and carry it away. The fuel tank itself can become a battering ram that can then seriously damage your house or someone else's. The fuel lines are going to be torn. The fuel will spill out, contaminate the flood water further, and because it's lighter than the water, it'll sit on top and that can catch on fire. So whether it's your own fuel tank or something else floating in the water, you install heavy duty bollards or boulders or some other large decorative heavy duty element that can can block large debris that happens to be floating in the water in strategic locations to best protect your house. If the water does happen to reach your house, if it's overwhelmed all of the other defenses,
fences, all of the bioswales. Now it's time to look at features that you can add to your house. The doorways are the biggest risk. There are devices that whether they slide into tracks or they are fit with inflatable gaskets, these are removable panels that block the lower portion of your doorway. And the exhaust vents, usually your dryer exhaust, happens to be a little bit lower to the ground. You get a vent cover that fits over top to prevent the water from rushing in through that exhaust vent back into the house. We've got the openings taken care of. Next, you need to seal the cracks, the joints in your wall, whether those are joints from damage, from age, or just natural joints in the material. Make sure those are well sealed. And also the joints around the openings, around windows, doors. Make sure that those gaps are watertight. Now you've established a watertight barrier. Your floor slab and your walls need to be designed in the first place to resist the water pressing in from the sides and from underneath. It needs to be something taken into account early on in the design phase. Let's summarize the discussion of a flood resistant house. Dry flood proofing techniques help keep water out of the house, such as decorative drainage channels, permeable landscape materials, bioswales, removable flood barriers, waterproofing and sealing joints and cracks, and a stronger building structure. In my next video, part four, I'll start to look at what you can do to prepare your house for if the water does make it inside. How can your house still be best prepared to survive being inundated or partly submerged to minimize the amount of damage to your house? If you want to discuss these strategies right away, feel free to get in touch with me by booking a project consultation call from my website.